Hi, my name is Paul Offit. I'm talking to you today on June 26, 2024, on behalf of the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Now, this year, for the first time in the history of dealing with COVID, we have um, companies that are making COVID vaccines that contain different strains. So I want to explain how that came to be and whether it matters. So we'll start at the beginning. Our first vaccines directed against COVID, which were launched in December of 2020, were all directed against the same strain, the so-called ancestral strain or Wuhan strain, whether it was Johnson Johnson's vaccine or Pfizer's vaccine or Moderna's vaccine or Novavax's vaccine, they all contain the same strain, the so-called ancestral strain. Then at the end of 2021, in December 2021, a new variant of SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID, came into the United States. It was called the Omicron variant, and it was very different from the original strains, very different. So much so that even if you'd been naturally infected or vaccinated, you still were not particularly protected against mild or moderate disease. And so at that point, the Food and Drug Administration and the CDC decided, let's not just give the ancestral strain, let's also give one of these Omicron strains because there's a variety of different Omicron variants. So in 2022, we gave the so-called bivalent or two-in-one vaccine. One of, the, one of the strains was just the ancestral strain given at half the dose, and the other was a so-called BA4, BA5 Omicron variant also given at half of the dose, and all the companies did that. Then the following year in 2023, it was a different variant that was used a different Omicron variant. And in, invariably what these companies do and what the FDA does is they follow the lead of the World Health Organization. And the World Health Organization said this year, 2023, we're going to give the so-called XBB15 Omicron variant and all the companies did that. Now this year in 2024, the World Health Organization said, let's give a different Omicron variant to keep up with the strains that are circulating. We're going to give recommend that, that these companies give the JN1 variant. Now, um, what the FDA decided was that they were going to recommend not just the, the, the JN1, but also to consider the KP2 variant. So, so that's a variant of the JN1, but it's very close. So if you, if you, for example, are infected with the JN1 variant or you get a JN1 variant vaccine, you're also going to be making antibodies against these other variants of JN1, so-called KP2 or KP3. So this year, it looks like both the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccines, both of those mRNA vaccines are going to contain the KP2 variant, similar to JN1, but not JN1, even though the World Health Organization had recommended JN1. Novavax has a longer production cycle, about a six month production cycle. So they had already committed to making a JN1 vaccine. So you have Novavax making a JN1 vaccine, the purified protein vaccine, and then you have both Moderna and Pfizer making a KP2 vaccine. I think for all practical purposes, clinically, these are going to be um, indistinguishable. So I think people shouldn't um, be confused by this and thinking, well, maybe I should just get this KP2 vaccine, the mRNA vaccines, because that's more um, more uh, closer related to the strains that are circulating because they're all pretty much close to one another. So that immunization with one will protect you against disease caused by the other. It's said another way that if you get the JN1 vaccine, you still will likely protect it, uh, be protected against the KP2 or KP3 variants and vice versa. It's confusing. I guess the bottom line is I don't think there's any clinical distinguishing these among these three vaccines, Novavax, Pfizer, and uh, Moderna. Thank you.